so we are basically <laughs> going to do a workout this morning. Um, I am behind the wheel of a early 1991 Lamborghini Diablo. These are the first Diablos produced. Uh, Lamborghini started production of these early cars in 1990. And you know what? We get so many questions from around the world asking us about all the Diablo variants. What do I think? What do we think on values? And all these different things. And I thought with the 30th year uh, celebration of the anniversary of the Diablo this year, what a great way then to compare the first Diablo with the last Diablo. So um, essentially comparing, this is a 1991, uh, I believe it's uh, 10,000 kilometers, so very nice car, and we're going to compare it with, right now we have a few 6.0s, which was the last Diablo variant made, the 2001 Diablo 6.0. So we're going to compare the two and give you guys an inside look at these cars. Um, I am obviously a huge fan of Lamborghini Diablo's example. I, I, there, there's no hiding uh, my passion for these cars, as you guys know. Uh, I, I personally have a Diablo, and, and I've done everything imaginable to, to be able to afford that car. And, and what's, what's so cool about these early cars is while they are very difficult to drive, they're very raw. I mean, I don't know if you hear that, I mean, through the cockpit, the, the, the transmission, the gearbox, the engine, the timing chain make all these incredible noises. Um, even almost feel everything rattle inside and, and you really feel like this is a hand-built Italian supercar. Now, no power steering on the early 1991 Diablo, uh, no power steering, no power brakes. The clutch is very stiff, okay? If we were stuck in traffic, I would be bitching up a storm right now because the clutch is not, this is not user friendly. And the AC is okay on these early cars, but what's cool about these early cars is they're raw. There's no computers. There's no you know front lift system that's on the later Diablos. Um, and starting in 1994 with the VT, really it's 1993 when Lamborghini first launched the VT, you started to have four wheel drive. You started to have the the uh, basically the dampening suspension. You had the front lifting suspension that was introduced in 1996, and then you started to have things like the alarm system with the with the very traction and uh, you had all these different things that were added to the Diablo this car is raw it feels like a, a an old IMSA car in many ways that was built for the road um, they're fast they make incredible sounds incredible noises um, and you just hear that I mean that's 492 horsepower that, let's make sure there's no and you can actually break the tires loose in these early cars. There's no traction control. There are no safety elements in here. There's no airbags. So it's a lightweight Italian supercar. They're very well planted. I love the way these cars drive, especially on the highway. They're just solid to the ground. They're very cool. Now, some things about the 91 that I would say a lot of people don't like is the large dash. Um, you know, I think maybe in the future we'll look back at these cars as, you know, being like the, the last pure Lamborghini um, because this car was developed um, by Lamborghini, by the Mimran brothers, and then later was further developed by Chrysler when they bought the company. So there's a lot of funky little things about these cars. You look around, the interior is is really nice. I mean, these were hand, uh, you know, stitched and done by hand. Um, and a lot of this car, you can see the fit and finish is not perfect. Now, when we'll jump in the 6.0, you'll just see how nice the fit and finish is. I think it's very apparent as the Diablo variants aged, and you could say the introduction of the VT, the introduction of the SV, the introduction of the Roadster, you see the fit and finish get much, much better. And then finally in 1998, when Audi purchased Lamborghini, I mean, that's when you saw fit and finish just, I mean, you could almost say it's, it's spectacular. Um, the Diablo 6.0, 
So I think I believe production started in 2000. There's probably about 260 cars produced for the world. 130 or so came to the U.S. We've documented most of those cars, and and the production of these cars is probably right around 800 for the world. So I would say these early Diablos are probably the highest production of all the Diablo variants. But listen, they have a cult following, and I really believe for the money that you could purchase a nice 91, 92 Diablo today, you can't go wrong. Imagine, let's call it between 150,000 and 200,000 for an early Italian supercar, 500 horsepower, that puts a smile on your face. I mean, that is intoxicating. Um, and this car is actually completely stock. So it's the, the exhaust is stock. It has its original catalyst. And imagine, it's quick. Um, so I think you could actually make a 91, 92 car very, very fast if you wanted to. There's rumors that some of the first cars to leave the factory, so I think the first 50 production cars had a little bit of a different setup and they were actually even faster. Um, and, and they were sort of eventually detuned by Lamborghini. So listen, I love these cars. Um, you know, I think this is an incredible value, uh, but I'd love to compare the raw early 91 two-wheel drive Diablos, and let's go jump into the 2001 6.0. Now this feels like a completely different car. AC is perfect. I feel like I'm in a modern spaceship, honestly. Um, this is more akin to the build quality of a Carrera GT. Uh, or an incredible supercar like that. Um, the Diablo 6.0, this is the end of the line for Diablo. And as I mentioned before, this was the car that essentially had the first Audi influence. Um, you know, obviously it was the 99 Diablos, but the 6.0 really, I mean, you just, the clutch is perfect. The AC is incredible. Uh, you know, it's fast, it's comfortable. The seats are uh, just a different feel. And, and yes, it's lost some of its Lamborghini rawness. It's lost some of that, uh, I guess, you know, crude charm of the earlier Diablo, but this is a car you can daily drive. I mean, truly, it's comfortable. Uh, it's got the, the, the 6.0 has the front lift suspension that goes up, similar to also the, um, I, th I believe the first lift was in 96 on the first Roadsters, but then you've got this sloping dash, um, which I guess, I guess, you know, depends what collectors you talk to. Some guys like the old dash pod of like a 98 SV, but it has this sloping dash, beautiful carbon fiber, these aluminum rings around all the gauges. The, the shift gate is absolutely stunning. I mean, it's a work of art. Uh, the shifter's beautiful. All of the, the buttons are, are very cool with these little aluminum gauges, and the carbon in this car is stunning. Um, even little things like the door handles were produced in aluminum. Uh, the plastic door handles of the early cars would break. The steering wheel, um, all updated. Again, same beautiful leather surfaces. I mean, this the leather doesn't feel as, I will say, as classic as the early Lamborghinis. Um, but listen, the Diablo 6.0 is 550 horsepower. The gearing is absolutely incredible. Some of the magazine tests uh, from 2000 and 2001 showed this car running zero to 60 in like 3.6, 3.7 seconds. So it's a very fast car. Um, but it's, it's not as raw. I mean, from the, the cabin, it's quiet. The clutch is easy. Um, I could drive this car and be on a, a phone call or I can push it through the gears and, and actually have a blast. Again, the way it feels uh, is, is almost exactly the same as a 91 in the sense of these cars feel very planted, I will say. Um, but the biggest difference I say will say is in technology. Listen, this car has four wheel drive. Um, it's got traction control. It's got the the dampening suspension. It's got all these other things. There's a, a even a, a system with the fuel and the alarms and the throttle bodies with the Carter valve and all, all these different things. So this is a much different car. Um, this has the varial uh, the the, the varial. <laughs> I just screwed that up. This has <laughs> the, the 2001 Diablos also have has the variable valve control. 
it's, it, listen, this is almost a perfect car. And in many ways, I would say the Diablo 2001 6.0 the fit and finish is maybe the best of all the Lamborghinis of a period. Um, I look at these cars, you could put this car next to a 2002 Murcielago and the fit and finish is actually better. Um, you open up the rear hood, you open up the front hood, it's all polished carbon. The paintwork on these cars is spectacular. Uh, it's it's not the same paintwork. The the early lacquer paints or or um, urethane paints that were used on the early Diablos. No, you you look at this paint and it's beautiful. Um, and also little things. I mean, I think what Lamborghini did with this car was they tried to embody the original design of the Diablo. So if you look at the 6.0, it has very clean lines. The rear lights, the rear deck lid looks like the early Diablo. And then you have things like, you know, they've, they've done away with the front uh, little intakes that were on the fenders. So it's a much cleaner front. It's got a wider track in the front with these beautiful, uh, I would say, arches that come off the fenders. So listen, I I love the 6.0. I think all around the 6.0 is the best Diablo. Maybe it's not as rare, as exotic as an SE30. It's definitely not as wild as the SV. And it's definitely not as raw or crude as the 91, 92 cars. But these cars are refined. It's something you could drive all the time uh, you know, look, we're sitting at a light now and I've got the AC on. I could open the Alpine radio screen that pops up. Uh, all my, you know, bells and whistles of a modern car. And that's just what makes these cars so great. Listen, this is an important year for the Diablo. As I mentioned, it's the 30th anniversary. And I look at these cars as the end of an era. Um, Audi uh, essentially developed the Murcielago and, and, and that became an incredible car and that was the last manual transmission Lamborghini. But the Diablo represents truly the last Lamborghini, I would say, with its pure DNA. Um, you know, and, and, and the 6.0 just does it so well. It's a balance of, of everything that's great about Lamborghini and everything that's great about the modern technology. So. I'm a huge fan of these cars. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening about my passion about the Lamborghini Diablo and comparing the 1990 to the 2001. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. And we've got way more vintage supercar content coming up.